Hello everybody, this is Groundback, and I'm here to tell you something that I think is pretty cool about Generation Jumble. Now, the Dragon type is pretty good in most gens. It wasn't really in Gen 1, but we've given these guys a second chance by adding multiple new Pokemon. We've added Walking Wake, Salamence, Haxorus, Nagonado, Gudra, and Dragonite gets buffed too because Dragon Claw is now a thing in this format. And something that I noticed that was originally discovered by, I think it was Sotina. Now, for those of you who know Gen 5, there is a strategy called Drag Mag, where you'll use half your team of only dragons and a Magnezone to try to care of the Steel types. I think something similar is possible in Gen 5, because the dragon types are so powerful that, you honestly, you could justify using multiple of them on your team. The strategy itself isn't as solid as Drag Mag is. However, I will say that in general, using a whole bunch of dragons and maybe Alakazam to help take care of either walling other psychic types or walling something like the fighting types, which could be annoying to you, I think it's it could be a legitimate strategy. And it's hard to tell which dragons could be the best. Because I thought Salamence was gonna suffer. But Salamence, even without Wish, has a lot of merits on its own. Same with Dragonite. So it's interesting to see where things are going to go from here. And now I have a lot, and I mean a lot of replays I need to show you guys. Because there's been a lot of battles going on, I couldn't afford to get all of them. But we still have a lot, and it's going to be crazy. Now we're going to start off with a match between me and, uh, hmm. I I'm probably going to say this wrong. Or Scato? Uh... I, I definitely think I said that wrong. Oh, wait, like, this match, the two of us had a VC. Um, this guy's really cool. And he's a strong battler. But please let me know how to quick say your name next time we VC. I'd greatly appreciate it. But this was the best of three that was really close. And this is where I tried demonstrating what I'm going to call uh, Dragzam. Because I think Alakazam is probably the main Pokemon you want to have on this team. Let's just check it out, shall we? Now starting up game 1, I go with the Ganadel. The Ganadel, with its amazing crit rate, is actually a really good anti-weed. As you can see right there, already like, one-shotting Chansey. Iron Hands gets taken out. And unfortunately, missing two sings in a row. Low Kick does a lot of damage. You go for another sing, you don't get it. So the uh, Chansey's taken out. Going into Alakazam. You go, or I switch to Executor. Which, honestly, like, uh... With Iron Hands, you can also justify that being the main one to use uh, instead of Alakazam, or both of them. Don't know for sure. I was testing this team out. But as you can see, game one is going very much in my favor. Gurudra tanking that Dragon Pulse like a champ, finishing off the Ganado. In comes Tauros, but I survive a Blizzard, go for a rest, heal up Gudra, and I believe I switch out here. Yes, I do. Go on the walking job. I say that because it's walking wake. <gasps> Uh, it wasn't very good. Or maybe I got a monkey. But you'll see with this match. I go into Executor in order to block the Thunder Wave. Because, quite frankly, there's a lot of things that I'm scared of when it comes to Paralysis. As you saw there, there was Leech Seed on my Alakazam. And I... And for... Or, not, or sorry, Executor. I decided to trade uh, Paralysis with both Alakazams. Because I felt like it was just really important. But here's the thing I was talking about where... Like, Walking Wakes is dominating with Hydro Mist. It's just really bad. <laughs> like, really bad. I, I don't even get a crit. Like, look at that! That was three different... Uh, whatever. We don't care about that loser. Executor comes in. And unfortunately, like, Body Slam is just not strong enough. It's probably a little bit unviable. But doesn't matter. Executor did its job. But to my surprise, it manages to live, live on a little bit. Tauros finishes it off. I go into the Ganado, which outspeeds the Fire Blast, doesn't get the KO, nor does it get the burn, and the Critical Blizzard does take me out, but I still have Iron Hands, it's super tanky, you miss a Blizzard, going for Low Kick, finishing off the Tauros, all they have is Alakazam, which I can survive at least one Psychic, assuming it's a non-crit, then I can finish off the battle with Hyper Beam. So, the game one was definitely in my favor. I... Definitely got a very good early lead, and 
Like, to be honest, even the second Pokemon that he had, Chansey, died pretty quickly because of just some bad luck. Having to face a match without your Starmie or Chansey is very... Yeah, that, that, yeah, it's kind of unwinnable at that point. And I think these two teams actually might be some standard. This, this, uh, Zam, or Drag Zam team could be, you know, modified. But this right here, this might just be the standard team, like, for uh, now on. With the Ganado and Iron Hands being the best Pokemon. Because now that Dire Call is banned, I will admit I am a little bit more open to the idea that maybe Sneezor is fine. But we'll have to see. Now for game 2, I go with the same lead. They switch out. Thunderbolt would not have been a crit, but I still think it was worth switching out anyways. I go on the Iron Hands because I could not care less if this thing's paralyzed. It can tank everything that Shanty has. I get a free Sword Stance off. They go on the Starmie. I'm fully paralyzed, unfortunately. They assume I'm going to switch, but I stay in, go for Hyper Beam, finish it off the Starmie immediately. They go on the Alakazam. I switch back into Executor. I don't care too much if it's a special drop, but I don't get it, luckily. I go for a Sleep Powder. Oh, well, not Sleep Powder, a Leech Seed. I predicted they were going to switch into something else. But, so, this is not a bad situation to be in. The full paralysis, unfortunately, really sucks. They go for another Sword Stance, which is dangerous. And kind of greedy, I'll be honest. But I managed to get a Sweet Powder off. I miss a Leech Seed. And the reason why I'm so insistent on Leech Seed is because... I think Leech Seed's very good for Pokemon like Iron Hands or Gudra. Who don't have any other way to get passive recovery. It's not perfect, but I think it's worth experimenting into. Especially since I feel like... You don't really need Explosion or Double Edge as much to take out Chansey. Because there's like plenty of other things. So I think that Executor can get away with a move like Leech Seed. Since if the opponent does stay in, you can get some like very valuable chip healing in. But I have this Executor get sacked, uh, the face off, or finish off, the, be finished off, but in the Gonadel. Go back in the Gudra, survive a critical Dragon Pulse. Blizzard does not finish off, unfortunately. So the Gudra has to just be sacrificed here. But I go into Alkazam. They have to choose. They stay in. Poison Jab, unfortunately, does not do enough damage. I finish it off with a Psychic. Now they go into their Tauros. And I have Reflect. So it's very dangerous for them. I heal. And this Alkazam is kind of unkillable. Uh, they go into Chansey. And I believe this is where we go into an Alkazam. Or okay, not yet. But I believe for one of these matchups, we do have a Chansey Alkazam Star War. This happened yesterday. So I don't remember exactly what happens here. My Algazam gets paralyzed, but to be honest, since all they have left is just their Algazam and or their Tauros, I don't care as much. Uh, Algazam is fully paralyzed, and I believe this is where we have the Star War. So I'll put this on fast. Because it's it this part isn't very different from Gen 1. Like it's just a Algazam Chansey war. But who wins? Who doesn't win? You're gonna have to wait and find out. They switch out a little bit. They go back to Chansey. I just like to say, if you think you would like to participate in Generation Jumble, the link is in the description, as well as the document that has all the information you could ever need about Generation Jumble. It's a lot of fun. We've had a lot of new people joining, and you'll be seeing a lot of those replays today. So I think you should join the server. We'd love to have you. Alhokazam doesn't love being taken out though. Going to Naganadel, don't get the crit. I get paralyzed. I have to recharge. They get a free chance to heal. I ha ha I'm forced to switch out. Uh, well, Kick does a lot of damage. Uh, they still manage to heal though. Uh, but it's like not unwinnable. But I believe I did forget that the Alakazam was like so not paralyzed. So Hydro Pump doesn't do enough damage there. Alakazam can just freeze and try to like hope I get a miss or something. Which is likely, as you can see there. Psychic gets a critical hit. I f I'm fully paralyzed. So then Alakazam fished me off. They go into the Gonadel. I survive. I get a special drop. I'm fully paralyzed. So then they just finish him off with Seismic Toss, which ends the battle. They have won Game 2. And Game 3 was insanely close. Starting out with Starmie and the Gonadel again. I switch into Gudra. They stay in. They go into Chansey, I use Thunderbolt, which would have been a crit, but it doesn't do too much on Chansey. I switched to Executor for some reason. I don't know why I did that. 
I uh, get hit with a second Ice Beam. It hurts a lot. They switch into Starmie. I managed to put Sweeps. That's actually kind of huge. They go back into Chansey. I go for Leech Seed. And I go for Stun Sport to paralyze the Chansey. My Executor gets put to sleep. But to be honest with the amount of damage it's taken, I think that's fair. And here's where I'm talking about how much chip damage actually really helps. Obviously, the Chansey is forced to switch out there. In Bucky Back at the Replay, I probably should have just gone for Sword Stance. But it's not a big deal. I go for Sword Stance there. They go for a Fire Blast. They don't get the kill, so I finish off with Hyper Beam, which just just insane damage. I go into Executor, since I know it can tank the hit. I s stay in. I guess I'm just trying to fish out what they were trying to do. I... I forget what I do here. I guess I went to my own Alakazam for some reason. But since the Star is a sweep, I just have the chance to switch back into the Nagonadel. It's going to do a lot of damage to whatever they take out. The Starmie is finished off. So that's one threat taken out. You, they go into Chansey. I switch into my Iron Hands. Like, luckily, I believe this Iron Hands has rest. So I can very easily heal up. So that's good. I go into Nagonadel of all things. I think trying to go for a burn. Which, uh, it's kind of risky. Luckily, like, Body Slam is like, just a weak move. Uh, Fire Blast does alright chip. I go back into Iron Hands since I know this chance it cannot hurt it for the most part, which means I can easily burn off the sweep turns. Which gives me a good advantage. I get hit with the Ice Beam, get frozen, go and force a switch in the Alakazam. They go into Tauros. I go into Walking Wake. They go back into Chansey. I go back into Alakazam. They try going for sweep, but they forgot about sweep cause. So I try going for psychic there, getting special drop. Unfortunately, getting paralyzed, which is probably a big deal. I keep, I, I keep getting full turns and full paralysis. They keep going for Ice Beam. I manage to hit back with a Psychic. Don't get the special drop. They predict I'm going to switch another turn when I'm just fully paralyzed. They're fully paralyzed. I heal off damage. They heal off two. And it's, like, keep in mind, since the Iron Hands is frozen, it's essentially a 5v4. I finally get a special drop and they get full paralysis. I use the opportunity to switch to the Gonadel, but they stay in, which surprises me. I go in the Gudra, since with a special drop, this Chansey has no real way of hurting me. Go for Earthquake, which only does decent chip. They get a crit, which is annoying, but I still have rest, so it's not a big deal. They heal off the damage too, and they're forced to switch out now. I believe I go into Executor. Yeah, just to... Just have a safe a switch in. I go back into Walking Wake. I try to go for Hydro Pump. And it hits. But no crit. But it's fine. Hyper Beam gets a crit. Because it's Tauros. So Walking Wake once again jobs. I have an Alakazam. And unfortunately they go for Body Slam instead of Hyper Beam. Which would have been a KO on Alakazam. Uh, Iron Hands finishes off the Alakazam. I go into Nagonadel. I use Fire Blast. Gets a crit. But so not enough. Body Slam barely doesn't finish me off. They switch into Chansey. I use Fire or Dragon Pulse. Switch back into Iron Hands since I can easily tank this, even with a crit. I use this opportunity to switch into Gudra. They switch into Iron Hands. I finally wake up. They go for Sword Stance. I go for Earthquake, I think. Yeah. Going for Earthquake. It's going to be a Star War. Or at least it would have been. It went for me getting the crit. They go in the Alakazam, which is not paralyzed. I go for Blizzard. It does, like, some chip. But not, like, anything crazy. I go for Earthquake. I get another crit. So, uh, admittedly, I'm getting a little bit lucky there. They go for Body Slam. That gets a crit. That finishes me off. At this point, I already know I won the game. But during the VC, he was, like, saying he thought he was doing really bad. I, I disagree with that. I thought it was a great match. So I went and just finished off the Iron Hands. Uh, the Iron Hands gets finished off. He gets a little bit greedy. And goes past his max attack, funny enough. So the Iron Hands gets finished off here. All I have left is Nagonadel. And technically with the 256, 256 glitch, I can still lose. But I finish off uh, the Iron Hands with Nagonadel. Making me win a very, very, very close game. Also, if you see him saying he wasn't very good, tell him he's wrong. Keep in mind, he this is like his literally his first ever match in Generation Jumble, and as you can see, he did really good.
So, that's great. These next few VCs I was around to see, but a lot of them don't remember because it was a while ago. And there's actually been a lot of different battles since then. So I'll let you know once I get to the battles that I'm surely blind towards. But this is Weird Fan versus Robo Push. This one was fun. Starting off with Algazam, gets Paralysis and Starmie. Starmie paralyzes the Algazam right back. You go into Chansey, go for a Psychic, get a crit. You don't get the special drop, unfortunately. A Robo Push goes for a Light Screen, which is gonna be very annoying for this Algazam, which has a full turn of paralysis. The Chansey is just gonna try to like just to get some chip damage in, because why not? The Algazam can't really hurt you. So they're forced to switch out. Go into Doug Trio. And this Doug Trio goes for freaking sand attack. So now you know why. Like I had the we quick ban sand attack and I made an announcement on it earlier today. Uh the Doug Trio finish off the goo or the Starmie. You go into Alkazam on the Gudra, which hits with Ice Beam. Doesn't really do a lot of damage. You paralyze the Gudra. You get a free recover off. And now you can just try to go for special drops, pretty much. Uh, you go into Tentacruel, which eats an Ice Beam incredibly well, even with a crit. Go for Sword Stand. They have Thunderbolt, but you're fully paralyzed. You go for Wrap, which doesn't really do a lot, to be honest. Like, I would rather just go for Poison Jab here, in all honesty. This is just torture. You actually do go for Poison Jab, but it's not enough. But luckily, you can still tank that Thunderbolt pretty easily. Poison Jab finishes off the Gudra. They go into Algazam. You're forced to switch out. And Chansey can eat that Psychic pretty well. Do you paralyze it back? Yes, you do. Uh, they go into Tauros. You go for Psychic, which I think is actually a pretty neat move. Because with different poison types, and especially fighting types, I think that um, that Psychic Chansey is actually kind of good. And especially with more Dragon types now, I think that instead of Thunderbolt Ice Beam as like as offensive Chansey sets, I think you can start using Psychic instead. I actually think it's pretty good. I think Alakazam being a lot better is another reason that Psychic is good, because now you can fish for special drops on Alakazam as well. The Duck Trio survives a Psychic, you finish off the Alakazam, they go into Chance or no, Minxiao. You switch into Chansey, because your Chansey isn't really needed at this point, you can very well sack it off. You go into Vespaquin, which, yeah, does a really, really great job walling out this Minxiao. Low kick flinches are annoying, but... I don't think it's the biggest deal in the world. You go for Defend Order. You survive a Hyper Beam. And you get a free heal in as well. You go for a Poison Sink. Which is so goddamn funny that that's actually kind of relevant there. You get another heal off. Which is good. Attack Order gets a crit. Chansey takes a lot of damage. Ice Beam doesn't do that much damage to you. Now they have Attack Order. Because even though it doesn't show it, you technically are doing or boosting your special defense as well and now it's just this minxiao which is a very bulky vespaquin that the minxiao has no way of really hurting and even with the reflect attack order has a high critical hit ratio so this game is pretty much done this minxiao also doesn't have source dance so it can't boost its attack either i don't think poison stings really that good though i think i think confuse ray is probably better but it's actually sad that that freaking poison sting is kind of worth maybe using as it could be used to do extra chip damage. I hate that a lot. But it doesn't really matter too much because this Vesequin has won the game. And there's nothing Robo can really do here. GG's the weird fan or fane. I think that's how you say it. Uh, I know he told me in VC how to say it correctly, but I didn't hear him. Weird Fane, I think that's how you're supposed to say it. But that- GG, good job for your first ever match. Uh, I tried to find them immediately afterwards, because seeing freaking Sand Attack enraged me, and I needed to, like, uh, dispose of it. So, we start with an Algazam Mirror. I think it's fine, but if it's like Starmie, I don't want to risk it. 
But against Alakazam, I think it's fine risking both getting paralyzed. I go for Amnesia Snorlax right away. Just figuring that he probably does anything to really deal with it. I use another Amnesia. And they go for attack order. That gets a crit. I get full paralyzed. Uh, they go for another attack order. And to my surprise, the best Quinn can survive Ice Beam from like two Amnesias? And I I I, I don't know. I don't I don't even know why. Now I'm cheating here. I didn't realize that Zamazenta only got body slam in gen 9. So technically I should be using Slash instead. But luckily it didn't matter too much for that battle. Vespa Quinn gets not only a, a defend order up, but way more importantly, also uh, it's paralyzed, meaning it can't be frozen. So this Vespa Quinn is actually pretty hard to deal with right now. Goes for a, another defense order. I try to heal up. At this point, I probably should be going for attacks, and I, but I don't think I do. Oh, and I go for Confuse Ray, which honestly isn't that bad either. They're forced to go into Duck Trio. I go for another defend order. They start using a uh, Rock Slide, but even with times 4 super effective damage, it's not enough. Slash, unfortunately, does a lot of damage and hits past the defend order. But they go for the freaking sand attack, and it makes me want to groan. Uh, I'm not sure if I try to attack right away. I don't remember. Uh, but they keep spamming sand attack, which is honestly just, like, probably making my best point I got non-threat now. Get full paralyzed, but I still decide to stay in because of how bulky I am. Attack order gets a crit, so that's nice. But the chance he can heal... So I try to go to Confuse Ray, but it misses. They healed again. I tried going for another Confuse Ray, it didn't work. Uh, is this full paralysis? No, it isn't. I actually get the Confuse Ray off. But now they go back into a Dark Trio, Attack Order misses, and a Critical Rock Swipe finishes out Vespaquin. I go into Zamazenta, which is obviously just immediately threatening. I go for Reflect. Hyper Beam does not kill, unfortunately. They paralyze Zamazenta. But assuming it's not a crit, I can survive this. They get fully paralyzed. I get fully paralyzed. They manage to heal. I tried going for a, another Hyper Beam. Wasn't enough. They tried going for Sword Stance. But unfortunately, with that Reflect, this Zamazenta is just... It's basically just unkillable. So there's not much that you can actually do here. And that's why I think Zamazenta is actually pretty underrated. It only has Slash and Hyper Beam as attacks. But on the plus side, with Reflect, you can stop quite literally every single Sword Stance user. So Zamatenta, I think, is actually a bit underutilized. Grab, obviously, is very annoying. But it's something that I know for a fact I can deal with. Because I'm faster. Or they're paralyzed, so technically no, but even so. Like... They will have to waste a lot of wraps in order to actually finish me off. So I feel very confident just sticking with Zamazenta here. It's boring to look at, I know, but that's why I'm quitting on fast now. Um, but Zamazenta is still hanging on there. They try going for Surf instead. I get fully paralyzed, which unfortunately is a big deal. They get a critical wrap, which does damage, but I... Not sure why I didn't switch out there, actually. Looking back at the replay, that was actually just really dumb on my end. Especially since I had a Annihilate. I will admit that it was a massive misplay. Now, Annihilate finished off the Tentacruel. They go back in the Dug Trio. Annihilate survives, but it misses a Hyper Beam. So it gets taken out. Going the right on, they switch out. A Critical Earthquake finishes off the Alakazam. They go in the Chansey. I go for Substitute. So, they managed to finish it off, but I hit an Earthquake, does a lot of damage, but not enough. Right on, it gets taken out, I go into Alakazam, Psychic, does like half to the Duck Trio. I'm not finished off by, uh, what's it called? Uh, it doesn't really matter though, because Toro takes me out. And after this, I talked to the council members. We decided that, like, Akashi moves are just not very fun. They're not very good. However, like, this is more so for, like, integrity purposes. So, accuracy moves for just now and for all other seasons are banned from Generation Jumble. But even then, like, I actually didn't really get mad. I had fun with that battle. 
and looking at that Zamazenta play again, I was... I have no idea what I was thinking. That was just garbage on my part. I'm sorry about that. Alright, next up, Weird Fan versus a rematch of Robopush. Starting off with Executor and Starmie. Go in the Chansey. You go for Sweet Powder, but it misses. You miss another Sweet Powder. They go for Thunder Wave. And they go for Ice Beam. Does decent chip on you. You miss another Sweet Powder. They miss Ice Beam, which is funny. Finally hits the Sweet Powder. They go in the Sneasler. Sneasler is a very threatening here. Going into Gudra, you get a Sword Stance off. Does this Gudra have Earthquake? No, it doesn't. It has Fire Blast. That's actually even better because you get the burn on Sneasler. Poison Jab finishes up the Gudra. But at this point, it has done its job. Sneasler is not as big a threat as it would be. Earthquake doesn't finish off, but you could very easily just survive a whatever and have it uh, be killed by burn. Going in the Vespaquin, you get a free chance to go for Defend Orders. So now you have two. This is probably a good time for you to actually finish off the Chansey. <laughs> yep. Chansey wakes up. Go for Attack Order. Get the crit. You finish off Chansey. And it also helps you're just very bulky in general. I'm assuming you go for Attack Order here. Yes, you do. It's not a crit, unfortunately. But it is super effective on Starmie. So Vespaquin takes out another Pokemon. So Vespaquin is looking really dangerous here. Iron Hands goes for a Sword Stance. And this thing probably can wall out the Vespaquin. So, especially with, like, max attack. It's just really threatening. And the Iron Hands is uh, poisoned. But in some ways, that's actually not that bad to deal with. You go for Confuse Ray, which is super huge on a Pokemon with 999 attack. If that thing hits itself in Confusion, it is over. It, it It's a champ, though. It survives. You go for Alakazam. You easily outspeed. So we don't get to see that Iron Hands hit itself, which is very unfortunate. You go for Psychic, you get a crit, finishes off the Tauros. You have her own Algazam. So it's just one Algazam versus an Algazam and an Executor. So, and another Pokemon. So yeah, this is looking pretty bad for Robo. Seismic Toss. It does damage, but you go for Explosion and you're finished off. Uh, GG's. And we also have, here's a new person, WizardJesus09. They recently joined the server, they've never actually played some Gen 1 games before. So Cyber, one of the members of the Generation Double Council, actually like played some games with them and helped them improve their team. So that's very cool on Cyber's end. So let's see how this battle is. Because we finally made it to the battles where I don't really know what happens. Starting up with Jolteon Weed, you go into Iron Hands, who can very easily well out the Jolteon. You get a free Sword Stance up. Uh, Psychic hits hard, but Iron Hand survives. Gets a special drop, but doesn't matter. You finish off... Oh, I think that crit... Okay, either that crit is the reason why Starmie survived, or it was always a damage range. Either way, though, you go into Goisopod. Goisopod gets a special drop, which is very unfortunate. You still go for it. You still go for Bug Bite. Only does decent chip. Dragon Claw does a lot of damage. I... Don't think Ice Beam is legal? Uh, maybe I'm wrong. Actually, no, I think it does one Blizzard. Never mind. But either way, the Chansey Psychic tosses the Gudra. The Gudra can rest off the damage, though. So that's very annoying for Chansey to deal with. It heals up. Gudra can, like, was able to burn a sweep turn off. You go on the Jolteon. Do you stay here? I guess you do. I guess you just want to paralyze the Chansey. Which, back in the Gudra, Chansey's fully paralyzed. Which is doing the Ganadel. Now Ga the Ganadel, even with a crit, does not kill the Gudra. You go for Dragon Claw, does a lot of damage, but not enough. And the Ganadel finishes you off. You're KO'd. You go in the Jolteon because you're faster. But I have a f Oh, they were going to Paralyze. Okay, that's probably a better idea. You switch in the right on. Do you go for Seismic Toss here? Oh, not Substitute Toss. I mean Substitute. Yes, you do. That low kick is super effective. Earthquake's gonna do a lot of damage, but not enough. You switch in the Starmie, which can very easily take that low kick. They switch in the Alakazam. You get a free heal one with Recover. You stay in. You get hit with the Psychic. You paralyze the Alakazam. You stay in, trying to get for some, trying to fish for special drops. You're paralyzed in return. You go in the Tauros. You get, take a lot of damage from that Psychic, which is unfortunate. 
Hyper Beam does finish, finish Alakazam off. They go into Nagonadel. You're pretty much screwed. You're forced to sacrifice the right on. It survives technically, but eh. You go into Jolteon. You outspeed, but it's more important to paralyze. Full paralysis is nice. You rest off the damage with Jolteon. You get hit with Dragon Pulse, but it's unfortunately a crit. So you will be finished off here. So the Gondadel gets another KO. You go into Tauros. You get finished off the Gondadel. You go for Earthquake. I think Hyper Beam does kill from that range, but you would rather just switch into uh, Sarmi. But that counterplay was actually pretty cool, though. Uh, I, I very well could have seen that working. You, you're going to you try to fish for special drops, which you get there. Psychic is pretty good. You're fully paralyzed. They get a chance to heal. But unless they switch out, you can still win this. You go for recover. And Chansey is just doing decent chip. But you can still heal off the damage no matter what. So I don't know who wins this. And I'm actually not sure why Wizard Jesus doesn't just switch out. I know that Chansey's like doing all right, but I feel like you would rather just switch out at this point, wouldn't you? Uh, I guess you were fully paralyzed. That's unfortunate. Fully paralyzed again. Fully paralyzed again. Okay, this is looking really bad. You finally heal, but you should probably switch out now. That critical hit might have actually saved you. Oh my gosh, not that 256 glitch. Oh, that is. Oh, that is good. That sucks so much. Annihilate, that does some damage. Starmie's fully paralyzed. Uh, fully paralyzed again. You're finished off. This is looking really bad. You have the Ganadale. You go for Fire Blast. Doesn't KO. Doesn't get the burn either, but you're still alive. Dragon Pulse finishes you off. You go into um, Iron Hands, I guess. Gets finished off too. You have Goisopod. That's very easily revenge killed. And last, it is the Naganadel Mirror, but one of them is paralyzed, meaning that Cyber DJ does, in fact, win. Okay, I was wondering who was going to win this. I had a feeling it was Cyber DJ, but saving the Naganadel for the very end was very, was very, very smart. Man, we're not even, like, halfway through the replays, and I'm already... Already starting to lose my voice. So, next up, we have Minari versus Lizard Jesus. Starmie Mirror, like you've seen in regular Gen 1 OU. Both paralyze each other. You go into Chansey. They go into Alakazam. Will they paralyze each other again? Nope. And now the Chansey gets paralyzed. And we don't get to see what it's going to do in return. You switch into Glycopod. It gets paralyzed, but it's very slow anyway, so it doesn't care too much. It gets a turn of fully paralyzed, which is unfortunate. You go in the Annihilate, gets confused, it also gets put to sleep, which hurts even more. However, I don't think Annihilate is too bad a Pokemon to be the one that's put to sleep, though. You paralyze Snorlax, you use Blizzard for some reason. Now, luckily, Glycopod tanks that body stone very well. You go for Sword Stance here, I'm assuming the Skangor has Thunderbolt. We don't get to know at the moment, instead, Glycopod hurts itself in confusion. And Thunderbolt does finish you off. Anai for some reason was taken in, but it's killed by a critical um, psychic. And I'm gonna put this on, on fast. Not because there's like anything stalling going on, but I can already feel my throat kind of getting out. So my name gets through these replays a little bit faster than normal. Oh, the Chansey though does manage to hold on. Minari is looking pretty good here. Algorithm's way paralyzed. You go into Chansey. And I think it's very hard to find a win condition for Wizard Jesus here. I'm already going to call that Minari wins this pretty decisively. So I'm actually going to put this on hyper fast. Let's see here. It's, uh, we go into Snorlax. Snorlax uh, can take a lot of moves, but it's unfortunately getting fully paralyzed. But you have Rest, which is really good. You, have, you go in the Lapras, and Minari is using a lot of Pokemon with Confuse Ray. I guess Confuse Ray is going to be your main win there. And yeah, then the Ganado was taken out very easily. Are we going to see a Lapras sweep? Maybe. But Starmie comes in. Starmie is going to... Would it faint to the Alakazam here? We're going to find out. This is very much a stall war. And yeah, I don't see, like, Minari losing this. 
The question's just if Minari is going to win without losing any Pokemon. Trolls is frozen. Will you paralyze the Starmie? I think you go for Thunderbolt. Yes, you do. You get very really good damage in. If Body Slam finish up the Lapras, you go for... Yeah, it looks like Minari just wins this with without losing any Pokemon. So, GG Minari. Alright. Next off, I think we have a rematch between these two. Let's see if Wizard Jesus does better in the second match. Now we're going for a lead executor instead. Gets hit with a critical blizzard, which is not an Oko, unfortunately. Sarmie Sarmi gets put to sleep. You go to Gudra. Uh, wait, did the Sarmie wake up immediately? What the hell? That's just BS. Either way, though, you go into the Lapras. You go into Annihilate, which gets confused. Annoying. Uh, switching the Starmie, it can handle the Anaya pretty easily. You can go for Psychic here. You get another crit, which kills the Annihilate. You go into Goisopod. Uh, it can take the Psychic pretty well, but Bug Bite without a Sword Stance isn't a guaranteed KO. Switching the Iron Hands, which eats the Bug Bite very, 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 very easily. You get a free Sword Stance up. If you want, you can... Oh, that that's a very unfortunate Reflect. You go for Psychic, you get a crit. Which is big, as you can imagine. You go for Psychic, you get another crit, taking out the Starmie. You switch into Executor, but another Psychic barely doesn't finish it off, but you miss Sweet Powder. Uh, I think Reflector was probably a misclick, if I had to guess. But that Algazam just went very close to getting a 3-0 sweep. Thunderbolt is a crit, but Wappers does survive. Part of the reason why I think it can very well be OU this generation, because even Starmie can't survive a crit, I don't think. Last Pokemon is Tauros. Fire Blast could be bad, but you don't get the burn there, so that's taken care of. You go into Chansey, you switch back into Gudra. You eat a Fire Blast up. You tank Ice Beam, but you need to heal, which isn't that bad. But now you're just trying to, I think you're trying just to stall out the Ice Beams, if I had to guess. It's a very annoying situation to be in, especially since the chance he's faster because of how Paralysis works. You unfortunately don't heal there, so I think Wizard Jesus probably wins this. Ice Beam does decent damage, Hyper Beam kills you. I don't remember if the Starmie's paralyzed or not, it is, Hyper Beam finishes you off, all you have left is Golisopod, which... Is not okay. So Glycopod. Oh my God, that is okay because of the Hyper Beam recharge. It's fine there. Does Glycopod get the win? No, it doesn't. Gudra Speed goes back to normal, or is just already faster, whatever. Okay, that was an incredibly close match, though. A lot better than the first one. And yeah, Algazam did carry. I do believe it is big three potential. Now we have Minari versus Drag Dravion. I think that's how you say it. Either way, though, walking wake of close to Haxorus. A very interesting lead. You go into Naganadel, you switch into Iron Hands, get hit with a Dragon Pulse, but it's a critical hit. A Fire Blast could be threatening, but Salamence also just eats up that Earthquake. You're forced to switch out. Fire Blast unfortunately misses. You're forced to switch. You go into Glycopod. I would imagine, yeah, would eat up that Dragon Claw. Another Dragon Claw does decent ship. But Slash also does decent ship. So I think the Goisopod can win this. Uh, yeah, technically. Slash finishes up the Walking Wake, which is great news for that Salamence. Jinx here could just finish off the Goisopod. You go in the Walking Wake. Flamethrower does half. Not enough, unfortunately. But they miss Lovely Kiss, which is huge. You go for Flamethrower. Gudra eats it up. You go for your own Gudra. Wizard does a lot of damage. But you don't get the freeze. Another blizzard hits you. You go for toxic. Okay, interesting. You're taken out. You go into Salamence. Use Dragon Claw, but that blizzard is just going to eat you alive. So now you go into Naganadel. Dragon Pulse. It kills you because with a crit. By the way, I just want to say, I don't think that Pokemon... I don't think that Gudra took any damage once. Because of how like it, uh, it used to work in the older gens. Iron Hand survives. It, it uses Earthquake. But Naganado doesn't care too much. You go in the Lapras. Thunderbolt does not get a crit. And there's definitely no way that the Walking Waken to finish it off. 
you're forced to go for low kick, trying to get a flinch. You don't seem to get one. Will you kill the lepers though? A crit is not enough. A blizzard does a lot of damage to you. You can finish off with the Lapras, but now it just depends on what the last Pokemon is. It's the Ganadale, so it outspeeds you, so Minery wins the game. Oh, so unfortunate. Even though I'm very fond of the Dragon type, I don't think 5 is optimal, though. I think- I don't think you should have any more than 3. However, you can see here that all of them do work very differently. Only two of them share the same typing. And those two are, are very different, since Gucci's bulky and Haxorus just has a lot of attack. Interesting. Now, this is the match that I had, like, very late at night with, uh... Oh, I don't even know how to say that. Gopi? I'm probably saying that very wrong. And once again, I'm using an illegal Zamazenta with Body Slam. Very sad. I don't know what I was really expecting there, I'll be honest. I think I just let the Zamazenta go to sleep, because I figured... It's the least valuable Pokemon. I go in the Snorlax. I get hit with the Psychic. And I go for Body Slam. But it, but I had Amnesia. But the reason why I went for Body Slam. Just because this was their first match in the Generation Jumble. And I just have a bad habit where if there's someone new. I just go easy on them because I feel bad. I often feel like I don't want to give them a really bad first impression. So... Maybe Amnesia would be better there. Doesn't matter. The chance he kills off the Annihilate, I go into Alakazam. It can just do a lot of stuff here. I don't get a special drop, unfortunately. I switch into Zamacenta, because I was scared that they were going to go for Thunder Wave. Switch into Vespaquin. They go into Chansey. They're faster, unfortunately. And I don't get the crit. But luckily, I think this is a chance where I can just go for Defend Order. So I can heal. I get paralyzed, which I don't mind too much. And now I can just go for another defend order. And now I can just kind of profit. And the only thing that can really stop me now is a crit, because I don't think they have any rock moves on their team. So I go for Confuse Ray. Now I can just heal off and then start going for damage. I don't remember if I go for Confuse Ray here. I might. But honestly, at first I was thinking that Vespaquin might be good, but not OU material. But now I'm thinking it might be. Because the Vespaquin getting an opportunity to go for, um... What's it called? Defend Order? Isn't as bad as it looks. I go in the ride on here, I get a crit. But to be honest, I probably could just go to Earthquakes anyways. Switch into Snorlax. Get an Ice Beam hit. Uh, I get paralyzed, but I don't care too much because I believe I have rest on this. Or maybe I don't, I don't remember exactly. I, I, I guess I do go for rest. So it's very, very hard for this Gengar to actually hurt me. Psychic maybe, but I feel like I can tank that very easily. Explosion does a lot of damage, unfortunately. They go in the Sneasler. I'm forced to switch out. I predicted a, a low kick, but Dire Claw was actually really good there. Now, I'm going to Zamazenta because I don't think there's a chance he can hurt me very much. I can burn a sleep turn, but I just forgot about Psychic, not gonna lie. In spoiler alert, it won't be the last time I forget about Psychic. A critical Psychic hurts a lot there, but Algazim survives. I manage to get a heal, but unfortunately, the Algazim does get paralyzed, which is really bad. So, I have to just recover off the damage and just try to uh, find another way to win afterwards. But I'm just in a really, really bad opening right now. There's not much I can really do. I switch out the um, Snorlax. My idea was maybe later I get paralyzed the Chansey, send out the Snorlax, and then go for rest. I don't remember if I go for it. I don't think I do. Now I just try going for special drops. I'm trying to like get to a position where I can force the Chansey to go for soft boiled. That way I can switch into the Snorlax and try to heal off damage with rest. They go into their own Snorlax. Which is not not something I really want to deal with right now. Especially once it ends up being like Amnesia Snorlax. Quite frankly, the worst one I could possibly be going after right now. Since that means Zamazenta can't actually deal with it. The Algazam kind of gets saved with the crit um thing magic there. The crit uh Thunderbolt. Not sure I was brain farting. But unfortunately, because of how like you know speed things work with the amnesia boost, Snorlax was faster. I go for substitute. I managed to get it, 
And now I'm just trying to go for substitutes until they either get a full paralysis or they miss with Blizzard. Which I don't get, unfortunately, outside of the last one, I think. This last one, I go for a substitute. They are fully paralyzed, which means I can go for an Earthquake. Not enough to kill. They, unfortunately, do hit. I go for another Earthquake, which finishes off the Snorlax. They have Tentacruel. Tentacruel finishes off the Rhydon. I'm forced to just go for Snorlax. This dies. All I have left is a Sleeping Zamazenta. But to my surprise, this Tentacruel starts boosting up with Sword Sands. I burn off some turns. They go for Wrap, which I actually like because that means that I know for a fact I can wake up without taking a lot of damage. Uh, they go for Wrap still, but unlike last time, I'm not paralyzed. So this time, I go for Reflect. I eat up the Hyper Beam. I heal. They need to recharge. I need some turns to burn off a uh, Sweep. So they have a chance to just go for Max Attack. But even with Max Attack, it doesn't do that much to a Zamazenta. Once again, I'm using Enrico Body Swim. I apologize for that. But Wrap, as you can see, does absolutely nothing. So that's why I'm starting to think to myself, do I actually have a chance to win this? I unfortunately miss Hyper Beam, which is a big deal. But even then, I this still feels very winnable to me. We have Wrap, but that's still whatever. I finish off the Tentacruel. Hyper Beam does not get a KO. I get paralyzed, which is annoying. And this is when they heal up. I try going for another Hyper Beam. It once again does not get a crit. And this is where I totally forget they have Psychic. And I think that crit it was what killed me the game. And they go for Slash, which just finishes off the game for me. Uh, either way, that felt a lot more winnable than I would have thought originally. This, this is the match that made me realize Zamazenta is actually kind of underrated. It might not have Body Slam, but either way, that match was definitely winnable near the end. And that was with me doing some misplays. Next up, we have Zack and Theus versus Wizard Jesus, and I have run out of water, so please help me. But either way, we start off with a Starmie versus Alakazam. Alakazam paralyzes the Starmie. You get a free heal and with Recover. Zack and Theus goes for Ice Beam. You don't get the Freeze Chance. You go for Psychic, no Special Drop. You go for Psychic, but you do get the Special Drop. I guess Zack and Theus is just better. Okay, never mind. This is a pretty even, fair and balanced gameplay. Alakazam gets healing in, and you're not paralyzing the Alakazam yet, which is interesting. I'm not sure why. But you guys are just getting so many special drops, it's insane. But now Alakazam doesn't actually heal. It's just trying to get as many special drops as possible, I guess. I personally would switch here. I feel like you can take advantage of this Starmie. But like, he's just going forward still. I can respect it. If you get full paralysis here, you can finish off the Starmie. Okay, that's good. But now this Alakazam is just way less threatening against anything else, such as opposing Alakazams. Uh, you paralyze each other. Zack and Theus, I think, will use Psychic here. Glycepod takes more damage than I would have thought. Buck Bite does a lot of damage, but it's not enough, unfortunately. They go into Starmie, which is enough. Zack and Theus loses that. You go into Chansey, Chansey gets paralyzed, and goes for Sing, and manages to get it off. By the way, I'm just going to say it now, I do not think Sing Chansey is very good in this format, and that's because there are fighting types that are way more dangerous. Chansey can use Sing in regular Gen 1 OU, because you can basically ensure it's going to get a lot of free turns, but you do not get that luxury here, and what you saw there is exactly why. Now, the Gonadel goes for Thunderbolt, you go for Body Slam, doesn't do a lot of damage, Fire Blast doesn't kill you, but it will kill you next turn, I think. So, Thunderbolt does not kill you, that's like the one move you could have used that wouldn't kill, unfortunately. They go into Starmie, you just go for Screech, just trying to lower the defense. It's still a sweep, you go for Body Slam, it's now a 2 a kill because of that Screech. You finish off the Starmie. They have Algazam still, but it's paralyzed. So you only really have Annihilate, which is ironic. Or not ironic, it's just kind of awkward. I'm not sure what Annihilate really uses here, other than... Okay, there's Earthquake. 
They go into Naganado. Naganado can do a lot of damage here. Doesn't KO, but you can survive easily. So Naganado finish off the Annihilate. You go in the Alakazam. Hyper Beam should kill, but you have Poison Jab instead. Unfortunate. You're just trying to fish for a crit, which you don't get yet. They go for Reflect, which might be the end, because yeah, with that low HP, it's still enough to kill you. Okay, so not bad. I, I think Wizard Jesus is getting better, but there's a lot of uh, times I, w I think they can improve. Now we have Cyber DJ versus Myrox. Now, Myrox is someone you might have seen in the chat before in some of my older videos. Myrox is literally my best friend. <laughs> and he isn't really too fond of Gen 1 OU. But I think just seeing the community really thrive has made him want to try it out. And his team is very interesting. I know what it is already. So I'm just going to try not to cringe too much. I'm just going to tell you right now, he's using a mono bug team, I'm pretty sure. With like one dragon type. Use. Ground by Guy RL, are you serious? I don't even know what to say about that. He goes for substitute on Haxorus. Do you go for sword stance? Yes, you do. But with that ship, you took from. Uh, okay, doesn't matter actually. Oh my. Oh, that is just unfortunate. Okay, you survive. Hyper Beam does not kill the Tauros. Unfortunate. A crit mattered there, probably. You go into Armaldo. You stay in with Toros, interesting enough. It gets a free sword stance. Also, that's a nice name. I think that's supposed to be saying Megalon. Substitute is strong enough to survive the... Um, I, I'm not sure why I'm brain farting on the Blizzard. Dragon Claw does break that. Earthquake does a lot of damage. Can you survive a Dragon Claw? Yes, you can. Earthquake finish off the Gudra. You go back into Jolteon, can very easily just revenge kill here. You switch into Galvantula. That is not good if that's the only thing you have left. Go for a white screen, you're forced to switch out. Go to Vespaquin. And this is kind of just unwinnable, because this thing definitely has Rock Slide. Yeah, this is looking really bad. You go into Glycopod. Does this thing have Surf? It's your only way you could possibly win this. Go on the substitute, you have waterfall. Uh basically the same thing. A critical hit, I think, actually mattered there. You go into Naganadel, Waterfall does really pitiful damage. The Dragon Pulse finishes you off. And the Naganadel, I am very confident, can take on the Galvantula. Not an Oko. Oh, but with a burn, it might as well be. That is rough, buddy. Oh, you you fit it. Uh, that is so disrespectful. Really? That's how you take it out? That was just... That is BS. Why would you do that? That is mean. That, is, that was mean. Uh, we have another match between these two. We have Yamega again, which has a very inaccurate name. Once again, you died to a crit. I'm pretty sure you just died either way. Galvantra is the only thing that can really stand up to this Jolteon, which is unfortunate. You go for white screen, which isn't very helpful against a Rhydon. You're fully paralyzed. They go for body slam. You try to... I guess we're not going to know what you're going to do. Rock Spy finishes you off. The screen lags a little bit. You go into Glycopod. You... I really don't know what you can do here, to be honest. Thunderbolt hits really hard. You go for sword stance. But you are... You just get killed by a crit. Okay, that is really unfortunate. You go into Armaldo. Earthquake doesn't really do anything to you. Earthquake does more, but that's mostly because you get a crit. Armaldo can tank these really easily, though. Not enough to KO, to KO it, though, which is unfortunate. Which means that uh, Cyber is probably going to take this game pretty definitively. I don't think there's much to really go on here, so we'll just put this in hyper fast. Yeah, this game is over already. There's really nothing you can do here. I would say GG, but that was that was a slaughter. Okay, we have uh, Weirfane versus Myrox. This should be interesting. Uh, we start with Galvantra as a lead, which I would say is probably a lot better. Just paralyze the Executor. Galvantra gets put to sleep. Switches to Armaldo. They go into Sneezler. This is actually pretty good for Myrox. You go for Substitute, 
And I think you can just go for Earthquake here. Does not Oko, unfortunately. They go for Poison Jab. Doesn't finish you off. You finish off the Sneasler. You go into your Zapdos, which can finish off the Armaldo, unfortunately. You go into Haxorus. This is still kind of dangerous. Because Drill Peck hurts a lot. But you go for Sword Stance here. They switch into Executor. You go for Hyper Beam. Does not KO, unfortunately. Do you explode? Yes, you do. Haxorus survives. But it doesn't matter. You can very easily revenge kill it with it being paralyzed. Go into Vespaquin. Vespaquin is a great matchup here. And attack order is resisted. And now we have a mirror between the two Vespaquins. Or maybe not. You switch to Yamega. Super effective poison sting, baby! Go for Slash. Hits through the... F uh, it technically hits through to the defend order, but unfortunately it does like really bad damage. <sighs> yeah, this sucks, but forcing the Galvantula might be your best option here. Doesn't matter though, because the Galvantula gets taken out. Going to Goisopod, you get hit with another crit. Oh god, not sand attack. This is before I officially made the ban, by the way. I am actually so glad I banned. A sand attack if this is what people are doing like are you kidding me your only hope now is to go for hypnosis but it's really not going well for you especially with that poison you actually <laughs> like have a timer so i don't even think you could ko this vespa quinn in time but you keep missing hypnosis uh, it's no wonder myrox h10 10 you so much when he gets this kind of luck oh boy you go for slash i guess or screech but it misses zapdos kills you all you have left is vespaquin which is not going to do shit to zapdos so you were just taken out yeah this is really unfortunate okay a good try my uh maybe next time you won't have to deal with an electric type now we have wizard jesus versus another match with cyber dj starting with jinx Except it's called Stinks. Uh, you put the Starmie to sleep, which is a big deal. The Starmie is going to try to wake up. So I guess Jinx is going to try to get some psychic special drops. You get a crit. That's always nice. A special drop doesn't hurt either. Go for another psychic. And the Starmie is just not having a good time here. You go for psychic again. You get another crit. Cyber DJ is showing why Jinx is base and why you should absolutely use it. Yep, Armaldo, which can get a... I would say can get a free Sword Stance up, but I feel like Armaldo... Or not Armaldo, Cyber DJ should have really gone for a Wealthy Kiss there. Not sure what he was thinking. But the Jinx is taken out. You go into Coyster, which is faster, which means that Quimp can do a lot of damage to you. So the Coyster just gets a free KO there. It explodes on the Chansey. You get a crit. You get another KO. Cyber once again exploding, as usual. Going to Alkazam, you don't want to risk Naganadel getting killed, so you paralyze it. You switch into Chansey, it gets paralyzed, which you kind of want. Go back into Alkazam, it goes to Reflect. You can try going for Special Drops. And since you're faster, that definitely gives you an advantage. You par uh, No Special Drops yet, you finally get paralyzed, which means that the Ganado is a little bit better. Just a little bit. So now we're just gonna I'm just gonna put this in hyper fast. Let's see how this goes. Go into Chansey, special uh full paralysis, Gengar, looks like jobbed. Tauros use fire blast, which is interesting. Poison jab does decent damage to Chansey, takes it out. Poison jab is not good against Executor though. Last but not least, you have Tauros, which can finish off the rest of the team, which means that Cyber DJ gets the win there. Alright, we're getting through these replays. Like, I don't know how long this video is actually going to be. Ooh, this is going to be fun. So Tina, which is a newcomer, and someone who has made teams that I'm actually very fond of, versus Minari, who so far in this video has been winning a lot of games. Jinx versus Alkazam. You paralyze Jinx. It doesn't manage to put you to sweep. That's very really good. Go for Seismic Toss. You get hit with the wealth because unfortunately... You go into the Swell Bro. Could be risky with uh, Freeze, but we'll have to see. You go for Amnesia. Lapras is going to be annoying. 
Do you stay in? I guess you do. I guess you're just going to go for it. We're going to see how good Swobro really is here, I guess. Uh, Swobro, or I guess Body Slam is going to be annoying, but Swobro can just go for all those amnesias. And Lapras doesn't have any kind of recovery outside of rest. So, as long as you don't get confused, yeah, the Swobro can win this 1v1, I think. They go in the Gudra, but it's a little too, little too late. You need a crit. Granted, though, with that super high special defense. Oh, you have Blizzard instead! Hold on, that's actually a big deal! Uh, do you have... You have Surf too, okay. Wait, is this gonna be innovation for Swobro? Do you get rid of Thunder Wave so that you can guarantee hitting dragons and hitting anything else? Okay, that is actually a huge innovation there. I like that a lot. Like, I like that a lot, a lot. You need to get the rest here. You do. Okay, is this Swobro able to just KO the entire team on its own? We're gonna have to see. Like, you're gonna need a crit, but it's hard to get with Lapras. Because it's not like slow, it doesn't have a bad crit rate per se. But, I don't think it has enough where you can rely it to beat Swobro. Surf finishes off the Lapras. You have Articuno. You're trying to go for a freeze at this point. But Surf does so much damage. At this point, it might not even matter. Because Satina hasn't even revealed most of their team. Uh, they go in the Coyster. That is something you should have used a long time ago. Because Clamp is like your one option here. But I am not sticking around for one damage Clamps. We're putting this in Hyper Fast. Or just go for Explosion. Uh, the Gonadel gets some damage in. I think it went for Hyper Beam. Uh, yeah, it did. Okay, I don't know why that was hard to look for. Uh, Tauros uh, finishes off. So Tina wins. Uh, GG. So, yeah. Blizzard, Blizzard on Swobro also caught me off guard as well. But now that I'm thinking about it, either Blizzard or Ice Beam actually might be the meta for Swobro now. It might actually need to just drop Thunder Wave in order to be able to hit more things. And if that's the case, Swobro actually could probably stay in OU. I thought it was going to drop, but with innovation like this, I can see it doing well. Okay. Let's see here. We have another rematch. This should be a lot of fun. Reading off with Raichu is interesting. You paralyze the Executor. It paralyzes you back. Doesn't actually play sweep. I can understand that because Raichu is probably not worth it. You go in the Iron Hands. Even with a Reflect, this Iron Hands can probably do a lot of damage to it. You could probably go for another one too. You go for another Sword Stance, probably. Reflect Zamasenta though can wall you out really badly. You go for Dual Screens, so now it's just unkillable, period. Slash does... doesn't do a lot, really. But at the same time, I feel like with the rest, you can very easily like PP stall this Iron Hands. And always with, you know, uh, Paralysis Luck, you can do pretty well. Like, like, as you see right here, Slash doesn't KO, unfortunate. It gets a rest off. Do you have rest as well? I'm not, you actually might not. You probably would have used it by now. Either way, though, you can definitely get some good chip damage in, but it's never going to be enough, unfortunate. Okay, you do have rest. Okay, you get, a free, get some free turns in. That's good. But this is a very annoying for both people. These are by far the bulkiest Pokemon in the format. You get Slash. Do they try to kill you? Yes, they do. It is unfortunately enough damage, but you can just uh, very easily just finish it off. Drill Peck there does a lot of damage. Two it kills the Executor. Also, it's the Starmie pretty hard. You switch in the Chansey. It gets paralyzed, but it's fine. Executor gets switched in. Go for Ice Beam. Does not finish it off, unfortunately. Go for Explosion, Chansey dies. Now you go for Starmie, you go in the Gudra. You switch out, weirdly enough. Oyster here will take damage from Psychic, gets fully paralyzed, unfortunate. Go in the Gudra, you explode, let's go! You go into the Drill Pick finishes off the Gudra. 
You go into Starmie. You switch in the Gudra. Blizzard's gonna hit hard, but Gudra is able to tank it. Do you go for Thunderbolt? You go for Body Slam. Okay, that's not bad. Paralyzing the Starmie is never bad. Not at all. Go for Earthquake. You get okay, unfortunately, you don't get full paralysis. Go for more body slams. And now you switch in the right shoe. Risky, but I like it. You go for Thunderbolt, I think. This Iron Hands is probably going to get a rest off. Just switch in the Gudra, yeah. You have Earthquake. You can do decent damage to this. But unfortunately, with a full paralysis there, it's going to be hard to do. You go for Blizzard. You're trying to go for a Freeze, maybe. Earthquake is your only hope. Or Fire Blast. Okay, if you get the burn. Okay, that's good. Like, with a uh, Freeze, though, this Iron Hands can... Or Rest, I mean. Go for Drill Peck. I guess you're just trying to fish for crits, which isn't too bad on Dodrio. You don't get it, unfortunately. You're forced to switch out. A Hyper Beam finishes off the Raichu. You get a free switch in the Gudra. Hyper Beam does not finish off, but you miss Fire Blast, unfortunately. You are fully paralyzed the second time, so I think Midori does, in fact, win this. Unfortunate, but you know what? Uh, Satina put up a really good fight. And, oh, I guess you, I guess the burn is still there, technically. That's interesting. Tauros, unfortunately, does probably finish off the Dodrio. But either way, GG. That was, uh, that was a good match. Okay, next off. Uh, we have round three with these two. I'm excited for this. Executor lead versus Starmie. Going to Executor. The Executor puts the other Executor to sleep. That's pretty good. Switching the Cloister. You go for... Either Blizzard or Clamp here. Go for Blizzard. You get the freeze. No, you don't. Starmie heals. You go for explosion, which gets the crit. Okay. Aggressive, but I like it. It's paying off. Going to Algazam. Could do great against the Cloister. You paralyze it. It goes for explosion. This is a really crazy match so far. You go for Gengar versus Gudra. You switch out. You eat up the Earthquake, even with it being a crit. Thunder is interesting. Stun Spore paralyzes the Gudra. Okay. Now you're just trying to go for special drops, which you can very much get. It's also nice that you're faster than the Gudra. Special drop there is nice. You have rest, but with that special drop, doesn't really matter. Also helps that you're just faster. A special drop there also helps you. Ooh, and a free switch it into the Gonadel. That is scary. Fire Blast will do decent damage. You don't get the burn. Dragon Pulse does season damage there as well. You don't get the kill. Doesn't matter. You can finish off from the Gon or the Armado. You go into Iron Hands. Trying to fish for a burn. Do you get it? No, you don't. Unfortunate. But Executor is still pretty healthy here. So I feel pretty good with this. If I were Satina. I switch or just try to go for more special drops. That works too. You don't get it, unfortunately. The Executor finally wakes up. And you finally get a special drop. But now you're scary because now you're the one that's put to sleep. With the special drop, you can theoretically survive more. But they do the right decision, switching the Iron Hands. But you're the greatest player alive, so you wake up. Uh, the resting Gudra block sweep. You just go for Psychic, trying to go for those special drops. Just one Executor is actually a big threat to their team. Which is funny because they have their own Executor. A critical Psychic does not kill, unfortunate. You go into your own Executor. You get another Psychic off. Now we'll see who wins the speed tie. A special drop is annoying. Going for explosion. Probably the best thing you could have done there. Going the golem. Which this thing just easily takes out the iron. Or I guess not. Last up's Gengar though. And Gengar can just revenge kill. So it doesn't actually matter. Uh, Gudra is weak. So yeah. So Tina wins game 3. GG. That was actually... Those three matches were probably my favorite so far. All right, let's see here. Oh, we got another one with these guys. That's fun. We Tentacruel is interesting. I don't think it's very good. Oh, we're testing out Toxic Spikes. Okay, I'm game. If Minori does have a Poison type, that could be... It's either going to be the best thing in the world or annoying. And right now, it looks like it's going to be the best thing in the world for them. Because I think that Chansey is going to enjoy having... Uh, not being paralyzed or asleep or anything. Zamasanta gets paralyzed. Okay, they do have Gengar. Okay, that's that's really sad. 
uh, let's see here. Toxic Spike seems kind of bad, and we just specifically want Amnesia T Bolt less lax. That's kind of. Wait, what is it saying? Maybe I'm still in my woodwork now. I'll try to swap it for something for Snorlax. Um, yeah, that's fair. I don't get uh, Snorlax specifically, though. Like, I think Toxic Spikes, uh, it's something that could maybe work. But I feel like if it were to happen, you need to, like, specifically, like, play against your team and make sure they don't have any poison types. And at that point, you probably paralyzed a lot of them. So Toxic Spikes, it's just probably not worth it, no matter what. Go into Tauros. And you go for an Earthquake here. Starmate tanks that easily. You switch out into Zamazenta. You eat the Paralysis. You take a lot of damage from Psychic. Slash does decent chip. They're probably going to be forced to heal. So you can just go for another Slash. They're in a really weird spot. Uh, they can't really finish you off because you have a good chance of surviving. You go for Light Screen. That's actually a pretty big deal. Okay, I'm assuming you're going for a rest here. Uh, we're going to find out. You sur Okay, you would have survived. It went for the crit. That's unfortunate. But still, you have free switch in the Tauros. Oh, you go for a Body Slam, predicting it. Unfortunately, you don't get the Paralysis. That would have been badass. But instead, you go for... Or we don't know what you go for. Confuse Ray is used. It's annoying. You try predicting another switch, but they don't. Go into Alakazam, they go for Psychic, you don't get the special drop, Alakazam can go for its own Psychic, you get, okay, you don't get the special drop, unfortunately, you go for Seismic Toss, doesn't do a lot of damage, they go for Thunderbolt instead of Thunder Wave, you get healing, but they're probably going to paralyze you, no, they heal, maybe switching the Tentacle here, actually, because with the chance of being poisoned, with Rap, you can do decent chip damage to it, actually. You finally paralyze it, but you get the but you got have the special drop. So in this scenario, poison's actually not doing that bad. It's annoying and could potentially put Chansey in a good damage range to actually be killed. You go into Starmie, you get Psychic, you get a crit, not enough to kill, unfortunately. But the Starmie is kind of forced to just go for um recover. Seismic toss is decent chip. But not enough. You go into Chansey. You switch in the Vespaquin. A great chance to take it out, actually. You go for Defend Order. So now this Chansey is, you know, it's going to be in a, for a rough time. The Gengar gets confused, which is good because it's probably a big threat to you, even with a Defend Order up. And a Critical Attack Order does a lot of damage. You switch on the Lapras. You're hit in Confusion. You switch on the Tentacruel. Which can tank this Whoppers pretty easily. You go for... Okay, we don't know what you go for. Starmie heals. You go for Poison Jab. Gets a crit. Does a lot of damage. Poisons the Starmie. Which is honestly not that good. Psychic gets a crit. So the Tentacruel is taken out. You go into Zapdos. That's good. So, uh, you take the Blizzard. You go for Thunderbolt. The Starmie is dead. And Minari still has most of her team left, though, so it's very dangerous. Uh, you uh, dodge the Hypnosis. Does Earthquake hit here? No, it doesn't. You switch. You go into Snorlax. You finally get the Earthquake, but now it's too little, too late. Headbutt Confusion. Jesus Christ. All right, you switch into Alakazam here. Uh, you are just going to die to the Snorlax, in all honesty. Yeah, Headbutt is really annoying. I'm not sure what you do here. Uh, let's see if Satina can beat this. And yeah, I have no more water. This is... I uh, ripped my throat. You go for agility. I guess you're predicting them like using body slam and paralyzing you. A thunderbolt does not do enough damage. And it wouldn't have done enough damage anyways, to be honest. So I think Minari wins this. Uh, you can go for a recover here. But Snorlax just hits too hard. Yeah, it's that's unfortunate. But still, uh, GG's. It was a good match. Now, uh, what do they go for? They go for Body Slam. Poros, I... Oh, that is just... You hate to see it. You really hate to see it. That's so sad. Alright, we only have... Uh, one, two, three, four, five replays left. 
We're getting near the end, folks. All right. Starting off with N Naganado versus Executor. Don't get the crit, unfortunately. You only paralyze the Naganado, though. A Psychic with a crit does kill the Naganado, unfortunate. You go into Starmie. Blizzard with a crit will be enough, but you don't get the crit. Starmie gets put to sleep. Just a horrible opening for Satina so far. Going for Explosion. Okay, I can I can dig that. Going the Lapras. Psychic gets a crit. What the? Oh my gosh. It's like the worst possible match for Satina. Holy hell. What, what the fuck? <laughs> this is, this is, this cruel. Okay. Uh. Yeah, this is happening right now. I'm just gonna put this in hyper fast because how the hell does Sotina manage to win this? I do not think it's possible. Not with an opening this terrible. They might be able to do something like Rap was able to get some chip damage in, but. Oh, my Jesus Christ. But now that I think about it, Minari using Thunder Gudra? I wonder if it's worth it. Mm, I don't know. Oh, uh, that was... That was... I don't even know what to say about that. That was definitely a match. Okay, next off. We have Cyber DJ versus Zashley. <laughs> Coco Melon fan. Uh, that is so cringe. <laughs> uh, the Executor gets some Psychics on the Gudra. You go in the Alakazam. It gets a special drop. This Executor is actually doing great. Going for Explosion. Finishing off the Gudra. They go in the Alakazam. You go in the Chansey. You go in the Haxorus. I think it's a little bit too early for something like that. But you do you. We have a Flying Tauros. That's spectacular, I must say. Bondusium doesn't do any damage really to the Haxorus, so it just easily finishes you off with Rock Slide. But who cares? Because you get a free switching into the Gonadale, go into Alakazam, you switch back into Chansey, probably for the best. They go into Dragonite, you use Thunder Wave. If you have Ice Beam, you. Okay, I guess you don't have Ice Beam. Oh, but the Gengar's paralyzed. That is so sad. Uh, let's see what happens here. Go for Dragon Pulse. Doesn't kill. But they get fully paralyzed. I'm assuming they're going to switch into Alakazam here. Oh no, they're only going to Del. Okay, that's dangerous. Dragon Pulse does nothing really. They go for Substitute, which I can dig. Uh, I guess they're trying to efficiency. They're going to go for something else. The Gonadel gets paralyzed because it's Gen 1 Substitute. It's unfortunate. Dragon Pulse is doing nothing here. Chance it can heal off or it can finish off with Ice Beam. Oh, so Zastri was using a, a Dragzam team. I'm only now realizing that. Body Slam isn't really doing anything, though. Chansey is probably a big threat to Dragzam teams. So even though I call it a Dragzam, like something like Iron Hands, might that might be more accurate. Actually, Drag Hands or Dragon Hands, maybe that's more likely? I'm not sure. Uh, we'll have to see you later on. Like, I'm probably going to be the main person who's going to try to innovate with, drag with like, with like drag mag. Whether it be with Alakazam, Chansey, Iron Hands, who knows. But it's taking forever for this Chansey to kill the Walking Wake. Holy shit. There we go. Uh, I guess with... I don't know. I don't think Zastui can win this. But I'll put this in hyper fast. Maybe I could be proven wrong. But let's see here. Uh, having a Iron Hands, though, like, that's actually really dangerous. Uh, I guess Cyber DJ does have Sword Stance, otherwise you'd probably just go for that. Okay, yeah, there we go. That That's the end of the game. Uh, let's see what else we got. We only have three more left. Uh, we have Rubble Push versus Cyber DJ. This should be fun. Because Rubble Push has been improving a lot since Season 1. Like, it's actually, like, such a crazy improvement. Oh, uh, we have Psychic there. Does, like, a third the Jolteon. Switch into Starmie. You get the special drop. I don't think you do. So you go into Chansey now. I don't think you get the freeze. We do get the crit, which is nice. You paralyze the Chansey. It paralyzes you back. Oh, going to Polyrath. Okay, that's spicy. 
And that's actually a pretty cool sprite too. Go for Amnesia. You don't get the crit. But you have Blizzard, which KOs in the Gonadel. Okay, that's nice. But yeah, Dordrio. Like, I don't know. Like, Cyber is just literally the greatest, like, player known to man. Except he's not ground back. Unfortunate. Uh, but now you go up against the Jolteon. It can survive at least one more seismic toss. You go for Double Kick, which Gengar eats. Unfortunate. Poison Jab finishes it off because uh, Jolteon has really bad uh, physical defense. You go for Explosion. You get the crit! That's big. You go into Alkazam, you go into Executor. This is great for Cyber. You go for Psychic. You don't get the special drop. They get fully paralyzed. You get fully paralyzed. They go for Blizzard. Doesn't get the crit. You go for another Psychic. You do get the crit, though. Just showing that Cyber is just a much better player here, as you can see. Yeah, actually, yeah, that's actually just a perfect opportunity just to go into Iron Hands. You go for into Alkazam. It's going to do a lot of damage, but at this point, you've pretty much already won the game. Going for a body slam. You get the paralysis. If you have hyper beam, you can finish it off. Well, I guess you don't have it. But who cares? You still have the Dodrio in the back. Dodrio finishes off Alkazam. You go into Iron Hands. You go for body slam. You get the paralyze. That's actually really good. And now uh, you can just use the rest of your team just to take out this Iron Hands. Just doing some chips that Executor can come in and finish off with a Psychic. Okay, that was a pretty fun match. Okay, full paralysis is actually... Wow, holy shit. <laughs> That's a big deal. Low kick does a lot of damage. You could probably just go for... Oh, um, that works too. Okay, Robo Push getting the unexpected comeback. That is awesome. Would have expected that, but I'm happy to see it. We have another match between these two. This should be a lot of fun. Hypno Lead and Jolteon. You paralyze Hypno. The Hypno goes for Hypnosis. But to be honest, I think you can very much survive Jolteon being your Pokemon that's put the rest. Not gonna lie. Jolteon wakes up immediately, showing that Robo Push is the greatest player known to man. Switching to Starmie. Uh, no special drop. You miss the Blizzard. They don't get to hit you. You go for another Blizzard. Doesn't do that much. And they'll turn a full Paralysis. Thunderbolt doesn't do too much either. Since you see it doesn't do that much damage in the first place, you might as well just go for Thunderbolt because it's more accurate and you don't have to waste as much power points. So let's see who wins this. Okay, rest. that really sucks. Going into Polyrath, you go for Amnesia. Yes, you do. Uh, this Polyrath is a big threat. Okay, Brick Break is illegal. You're not supposed to have that. <laughs> but who cares when you just have Counter? I could have sworn I told Robo that Brick Break was illegal, though. Am I? I, I thought I did. Maybe I'm wrong. Uh, Critical Earthquake does nothing to Annihilate, though. And neither does Blizzard. Body Slam does decent ship, but to be honest, I think the Tauros is going to win this exchange. Yeah, there you go. Alagazam does a lot of damage, not enough to kill. Body Slam does, does in fact paralyze. You switch into Hypno. Hyper Beam does not kill, but this Hypno is a sweep. You switch to Armaldo. Uh, could have a chance to just go for Sword Sands, actually. Yeah, the Armaldo could just sweep here. Earthquake does nothing. Bug Bite does KO. You go into Starmie. Bug Bite KOs. You go into Alakazam. Bug Bite is definitely gonna KO. Or Hyper Beam, that works too. Go into Jolteon. I'm assuming you have Earthquake. Or Bug Bite itself also works, not gonna lie. Uh, let's see here, what else do you do? Thunderbolt does kill with a crit, that's unfortunate. Go for uh, Goat Sire. Double Kick does nothing because it quad resists fighting just going for free amnesia so let's see what else you do here just keep setting up there's not much royal push can do i'm assuming the last pokemon can't hurt uh, goat sire either surf ko's and the last you have is yeah hariyama this game is over surf doesn't get it to a ko though well kick gets a crit does it flinch no it doesn't so yeah, Cyber DJ wins this. 
Okay. Maybe Robo can still win. Maybe Robo could still win. Holy crap. Oh my god. That was awesome. Not gonna lie. I am so proud of Robo right now. And we have another match between these two. And this is gonna finish it off. I'm just gonna put this one on fast. Uh, just because I uh just because I want to. Okay, the Tauros has put the sweep. That's a big deal. Psychic does decent damage. Tauros is almost dead, however. Okay, Anomalip just easily takes on this Tauros, though. Easily. So now, Robo goes into Jolteon. You go into Koids, or Goat Sire. Uh, you go into Starmie. Poison Jab does decent. Chip, I guess. I don't know. Uh, Blizzard, Chansey takes easily. Gets paralyzed. You paralyze it back. They go for Recover. You have Thunderbolt. I don't know. Just go into Hypno. Why not? You can just go for special drops. Full Paralyze. That's nice. Another Psychic. Get a crit. And you get a full Paralysis. Another Psychic. So not getting a special drop. Um, You know, get another cr crit. There we go. Sneezler. Uh, well Kick. Just trying to go for flinches. Really risky. I probably wouldn't try doing that. But you can do you. Looks like it's kind of working out. Uh, Goat Sire, I think, can wall sneeze or pretty well, I would say. Uh, this is kind of sad to see, though. Uh, when's this gonna end? <laughs> this is sad. Okay, you're finding it those amnesias up. Uh, you can just go for a free recover, and you can also just go for a... Yeah, you're gonna need to go for more amnesias. Because a uh, Goat Sire does not actually hit hard without Water Stab. Surf does decent damage there, I guess. Uh, you can go for another Recover. Uh, are you at max special, which is 3? You might be, actually. And if that's the case, that's actually really unfortunate. Oh, a crit. I would say that's unfortunate, but you saw 5 Pokemon. Not really a big deal. Iron Hands is paralyzed. You go into Monkey Business. You just go for some Earthquakes here. They can do decent damage. And Rockswide is not... Okay, I can see this. I can see where this is going. I think for once, Royal Poise actually will lose, though. Uh, let's see here. Going to Jolteon. Earthquake gets a crit. You only really have Alakazam now, which means you're going to dedicate your entire team to just taking it out, which won't be that hard. What does he, what does he go for here? Uh, we don't get to see. Alakazam gets taken out. You go into Chansey. Go into Iron Hands. Iron Hands gets killed. So now it's just Alakazam versus the world. And it's probably not going to go well for it. Not going to lie. But with crits, maybe. And special drops, maybe. And full paralysis, maybe. Okay, that chance he's just hanging in there. Switching to your own Alakazam. Okay, this is... Okay, yeah, this is this is GG. Uh, there's not much you can do here for if you're Rubble Push. So let's just see here. Uh, it's, only, it's, only, it's inevitable that the Alakazam gets taken out, as you can see. So there we go. I finally took care of all of those replays. Okay, in the future, I'm not going to react to so many. This is... Uh, this was... Uh, this was a doozy. But those were a lot of fun. My favorite were the ones with Minori and Sotina. But Robo Push getting a big uh, comeback there was also pretty great. Overall, this was a lot of fun. Uh, thank y'all for watching. This is Groundback. And until next time, I look forward to hearing from you.